Hey, DJ. Oh, we, I got like two more because DJ needs his stuff back. Wait a minute, you mean I borrowed, I borrowed your stuff. Sorry. Yeah, I borrowed your stuff. Sorry, Deshaun. Wait, what, what is yours? Is any of that yours or is that? The chest there is mine. <laughs> That is Ryan Fitzpatrick, now retired NFL quarterback, 17 seasons in the NFL, nine teams. And he always gave us moments, Peter. We have two hours to reflect on the moments of Ryan Fitzpatrick, plus some other retirement talk, plus today's draft, the best journeyman quarterbacks of all time in honor of Ryan Fitzpatrick. But before any of that, I say good morning to Peter King. Welcome back. It's another Friday. Good morning, Mike. Good to be with you. And, um, you know, my last extended conversation with Ryan Fitzpatrick, believe it or not, had to do with probably the only disappointing year of his career. And look, he had a lot of years where he was invisible. But he told me that after his 2015 season with the New York Jets, that he seriously thought of retiring because it was such an unpleasant year of football. And that's what I ended up thinking about last night. I mean, I hate to be Debbie Downer, but that was the one year out of all of them that he really, really disliked playing football. He liked, disliked New York. He disliked, I don't think he disliked the city, but he did just dislike being on that team. And, uh, you know, if you look at, all of the years he played i mean that's one of his big stops you know as you can see 22 starts there or 27 starts there and um you know i think the one thing though i'll always remember him in a football sense is that game that he played for the dolphins at vegas uh a year and a half ago where he was an absolute hero down the stretch of that game. He came in, he came in for Tua Tagovailoa, who was slumping, it wasn't playing well, and he made that no-look pass with his face mask going sideways. And I, I don't know, I just think, I think he's had an absolutely remarkable career for a guy who essentially, is this the pass? This is just, thank you, thanks for doing this. Look at this. How in the world did this happen? Tell me. Watch his face. Watch his face. How did he complete this ball? I don't know. Unbelievable. But that, that's, that's the, the kind that's of his stuff exorcist that I play. remember. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. he had the – you see him in all these different uniforms, all these different years, all those different teams. Wasn't it during the draft that there was a group of guys crossing the street in Las Vegas with all their Ryan Fitzpatrick jerseys on from every team that he's ever played for? Yeah. It really is amazing yeah. when you think about how long Fitzpatrick has been part of the NFL and how he's managed to keep finding landing spot after landing spot after landing spot and earning in many different places – there they are. I wondered what that sound oh was. There they are crossing the what street. A crew all we the got. Fitzpatrick what a crew jerseys. We got. All the way back to the Rams. Back to the Bills. Here we go. All right, let's kill the sound on that. And let's just kill it all together. Thank you. Not not the guys. Just the, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um uh or the guys if you want. Uh but uh he, he he would always find his way onto the field. He was never or not never, rarely signed to be the starter. But he was at one point kind of like the Bills franchise quarterback got a big guy. contract. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then it fell apart. But then that's when he found this second or third or fourth act, whatever the case may be, where he would just go somewhere, and the next thing you know, he's playing. Then he goes somewhere else, and the next thing you know, he's playing. And he, he kept doing that indefinitely. And you mentioned the Jets. He had one really great year there where they went 10-6, and six, and it was the next year where he held out – he didn't hold out because he wasn't under contract, but he waited until like right before training camp to sign because they were lowballing him and he wanted more and he deserved more. And that season is the one that just never really got going. He was three and eight in 11 starts that year. And then, and then he moves on. You think he's done and he goes somewhere else. And then you think he's done and he goes somewhere else. It really was an amazing run. 
All right, Mike, I've got a Ryan Fitzpatrick quiz for you, okay? Over under career earnings of Ryan Fitzpatrick, $75 million. Give me your over, over. under. What do over. you got? Over. Oh, over. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. Well, not by a lot. 80.6 oh, million, really? his career earnings. Wow. N- not bad wow. for a guy from Harvard who was drafted, what, in the seventh round? And 250th pick, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But not bad. I mean, and and look, there's one thing about Ryan Fitzpatrick. If you ask his coaches, if you ask the guys he played with, uh, it, it, you know, if, if, if you ask in particular, if you ask guys he quarterbacked with, I'm not saying, I, I think it's overstating it to say he was a beloved figure. Ryan Fitzpatrick was a great teammate and he was a guy who coaches loved to coach because he would give you everything he had. If it wasn't good enough, he'd go back to the sidelines and the other guy would play. Best season statistically was 2015, his first year with the Jets, 3,905 yards. Never had a 4,000-yard season, but got close that year. Had several seasons of 3,000 or more, 38-32 with the Bills in 2011. And then with Miami in 2019, he had 3,500-plus yards. That was the year before they drafted Tua Tonga by Loa, and he wasn't giving up that job easily. Remember, he was unhappy when he got benched, and they kept bringing yeah. him in. A year later, Tua Tonga by Loa would admit that right. it was because he didn't know the two-minute offense as well as Fitzpatrick, and Fitzpatrick did, and they used him repeatedly that year, and they almost made it to the playoffs in that 2020 season. And then what a disappointing way for him and for everyone for his career to end. He goes to Washington, and he plays in one game, throws six passes before he suffers that hip injury that ends up being the last time we ever see him. You know, I think there's a lesson in Ryan Fitzpatrick's story And that is, I always thought it was so interesting how all these different teams he went to and every team he went to, all he did was show up on opening day and and give him everything he had. Sometimes he played, sometimes he didn't. And you're right, Mike. You could tell that there were some times he was ticked off about not playing and not playing enough. And, and you, could, you could sort of feel that with him. But, but the only thing he ever did was control what he could control, okay? And what I mean by that is that he would show up for work, whatever decisions were made, you know, as far as who was playing, whether he was on the bench, whether he was in the game, those were not his decisions to make. But... You know, he told me one time that, you know, his family just like loved the life. I think he had seven kids, right? His family just loved the life and loved, uh, you know, being a part of it. And the year, I think it was what, the two years he was in Miami, right? Or was it, was it two, two years in Miami? Two years. However long he was in Miami, he commuted back and forth to Tampa with his family and i'm sure he had an apartment and they would come but whatever but he would always go home and take a ride across alligator alley and go home and be with his family whenever he could and they just really kind of thought that well this is what our dad does this is the life okay so let's all get used to it and we can turn on the tv on sunday and watch him play quarterback so i think he really understood without getting too exercised about what life in the NFL was like for not a superstar player. The 2018 season is one of the most memorable from Fitzpatrick for me because that's when he got to start the first three games of the season because Jameis Winston was serving a suspension. And Fitzpatrick was spectacular. And it culminated in that Monday night game against the Steelers where it was back and forth and back and forth. And he became... The first quarterback in NFL history to throw for 400 plus yards in three straight games during that three game audition to the point where they took their time with Jameis Winston when he was returned from his suspension. 
And that that was kind of Fitzpatrick's story. When you didn't expect anything from him, he would end up playing great. And you'd be like, yes. holy crap, yeah. this guy's a good quarterback. And then when you would begin to expect it, that's when it would fall yeah. apart and he would inevitably be benched. And it was this cycle that just yeah. went through 17 seasons. And I don't know if there's something psychological with him. Like like plenty of people when they golf, like once they start getting pretty good, they start thinking they're pretty good. And the next thing you know, it all falls apart. It's one of the reasons why I don't golf anymore. It may be that he had that mindset that, that it kind of crept into his brain. Hey, I'm pretty good now. And uh, then uh, something happened and it all crumbled. And then he would do it again with some other team or with that same team at some point later in a given season. But it really was an amazing fluctuation. And if he ever could have settled in on the higher end, he wouldn't have been moving around to so many different teams. And we'd be talking well, not about only wouldn't he be moving to Hall of Famer. Yeah, not only wouldn't he be moving around, Mike, but he'd st he would not have retired yesterday. Yeah. I I'll tell you that much. This guy... He's like, you know, when Phil Simms retired, he was 38 years old, and he said, man, they're going to have to tear the uniform off me. He wanted to keep playing. And so many of those guys do. Now, a lot don't. But Ryan Fitzpatrick was like that. You know, I think he just loved the life. Mike, there's one other thing about this that I think there's a lot of what we do in our jobs that a lot of times I wonder, I mean, really, how much good are we doing for society? And probably not a lot, but I would just say this. I think in sort of extolling the story and telling the story of a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick and talking about him, I really think, I honestly think that's one of the things that people love about football. Sort of the offbeat stories. Ryan Fitzpatrick showing up with his chest hair hanging out uh, at a, at a post-game press conference, you know, and dress like wh whoever. I don't even know what he's dressed like, but not like a guy with seven kids who lives in the suburbs in Tampa. And so to me, I just sort of always look at sort of the way he played and his role in this juggernaut called the NFL that that we sort of all have a part in, that I think he played his part, he played his role, he was wonderful, and he's one of the great characters, you know, in the last 20 years in the NFL. Let me just say something here before we get back to the quarterback retirement talk, because something you mentioned, uh, number one, it's going to spark a bunch of emails from people who will tell me to say to you that even though we may think that we really don't add anything, and I go through that, frankly, all the time, let's go ahead and bear our souls here. I can't tell you how many days I ask myself, what am I really doing? What do I really add <laughs> to anything? And please, please, no emails responding to that. But what, what, are, what are I really doing yeah. here? Copy, paste, snarky comments. Somebody reads it or not, moves on to the next one. It's all gone. It's all, you know, by the next day, they're looking yeah. for the next wave of stories. And we talk for a couple of hours of and then we stop talking. I hear from people all the time, Peter, and this isn't to make it about us, but you brought it up. And I just want to make sure you understand it. And I want to make sure everybody out there understands it. And I'm trying to say this to myself, too, because I go through it all the time, all the time. What the hell am I really adding to anything? Um, people like having a place where they can go to get away from all the shit that they have to deal with every day. And if you haven't noticed right now in our collective American experience, there's a lot of shit we got to deal with. So we provide that tiny little oasis, whether it's reading Football Morning in America, whether it's reading my copy paste snarky comment posts, whether it's watching and listening to this show, we are providing people a much needed break from this shit so that's what we do i don't know that it makes you feel any better but that's what we do yeah you're right about that mike but i think sometimes i think sometimes we when when i see like i, I i'll give you an example i forget one of those times when ryan fitzpatrick showed up in a costume in a post game for a post game press conference 
And I remember, like, I looked at social media at that time, and it was bigger than all of the games that day. And I just remember saying, how silly is this? But you know what? People just like fun. And I think, Mike, I think of this sometimes too. You know, why don't I write more about CTE? Why don't we talk more about it? Why don't we do more about the real serious stuff? And I think part of the reason is because, look, we can, we can cover everything. We have time to cover everything. So we will cover CTE. We will cover, the, you know, the relationship of ALS to the game. All that stuff. I get that. But I do think sometimes, absolutely, you're right. Sometimes people just want to laugh, have fun, get a chuckle. That's one of the reasons why Ryan Fitzpatrick was such... I don't know that he was a singular player over the last 15 years or so, but he's close to it. He was fun. He did not take himself too seriously. He understood his place in the NFL ecosystem, which was not up here with Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, but also it's not down here with the guys who fail and get cut, okay? It's right here in the meaty part of the curve. But as far as entertainment and fun, he's up here in the top 10 to 20 guys of the last 15 years. And that is one of the things we shouldn't forget about Ryan Fitzpatrick. Why does everybody watch this stuff? Why does so many people play fantasy football? It's a diversion. It's fun. And Ryan Fitzpatrick helped everyone who loved football have a lot of fun over the last few years. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.